A mine flail is a vehicle mounted device that makes a safe path through a minefield by deliberately detonating landmines in front of the vehicle that carries it. A number of experimental flail tanks were produced by the Allies and eventually one of these, the Sherman Crab, went into full production. The Crab's fail was powered by the main engine, the Sherman's transmission being modified to add a power takeoff and remove the need for an outside auxiliary engine. A further innovation was the addition of cutters to the rotor that cut barbed wire and stop the fail from becoming tangled. This feature made the crab very effective at tearing up barbed wire obstacles. The crab weighed 32 tons, around 2 tons more than a normal Sherman tank. Great attention was also paid to marking the cleared path through the minefield. The crabs carried a pair of bins filled with powdered chalk that slowly trickled out to mark the edges of the safe route. In combat, the usual tactic was to use crabs in groups of five. Three would go forward in echelon formation, clearing a broad path through the minefield, and the other two would hang back on the flanks and give fire support, but were ready to move forward to replace one of the flailing tanks if it was disabled. The crab could only move at 2 km per hour when flailing and the gun had to point to the rear, so the tank could not fire even if the gunner could see his target. It is a little known fact that the German army also experimented with a flail tank, but they had a totally different approach. This bizarre armored tractor was jointly designed by Alcat, Krupp and Mercedes-Benz. The Schwere Minenräumer or the heavy minesweeper Alcat was built in 1942, 24 years after the First World War. The main idea was to build a unit with wheels and the explosion of a mine under which would not cause damage to the carrier itself. The history of such an unusual project began after the end of the first series of German operation in 1940 and 41. The German army solved all the tasks assigned to it with minimal effort, enriching itself with combat experience. Based on the results of the combat operations of the first two years of the war, an analysis was carried out of the use of mine explosive barriers in the new conditions of maneuver warfare. At that time, one of the known and used methods of clearing mines of the battlefield was the use of heavy roller trolls pushed by a tractor or a tank. So a joint project between Alcat, Krupp and Mercedes-Benz started in 1942 to combine the tractor and the troll into one combat unit. The prototype itself was built by Alcat, which was ultimately responsible for its development, so the rest of the participants in this project are often omitted. The Alcat Minenräumer was a three-wheeled self-propelled troll in which each wheel was equipped with a system of shoes developed before the First World War and actively used by German heavy artillery during the First World War. Theoretically, the 40-ton unit should have withstood the explosion of any infantry and tank mine under the wheel. 
The maximum speed of the minesweeper was only 15 km per hour. The vehicle moved forward with the large wheels and the rear wheel was controlled by a chain drived from the driver's seat in the cab. The control compartment housed a turret from a Panzerkampfwagen 1 tank with two machine guns. A crew of two people entered the minesweeper through the top hatch of the fighting compartment and the turret hatch. But it would be almost impossible to leave it alive under enemy fire getting out of a hatch at a 4 meter height. The front wheels with a diameter of 1.9 meters were driven from a motor located closer to the center of the car through a gearbox. For combat use, three vehicles had to drive into a minefield and move along, maintaining a direction of movement. Tanks and motorized infantry were supposed to move behind the trawlers in a column. The heavy armored vehicles were supposed to run into mines and provoke their detonation. The design of the wheels made it possible to replace the shoes damaged by the mine explosion with new ones. After the passage of the minesweeper through the minefield, three mine-cleared strips were formed. In 1918, this monster looked quite normal on the battlefield, at least the appearance of such a machine would not have been surprising. Bigger designs were also used there. But in 1942, a slow and huge elephant that appeared on the battlefield would have been destroyed within minutes. Moreover, the three-wheeled chassis did not provide the required maneuverability on the battlefield, and there would be problems with delivering it to the battlefield, especially in the absence of paid roads. Based on the sum of all these shortcomings, the project was not accepted for implementation and the minesweeper was abandoned at the test site. In the spring of 1942, the Alket Minenräumer was captured at the Kummersdorf training ground. In the Soviet Union, until the summer of 1947, the Red Army conducted field tests in Kubinka. All theoretical assessments were confirmed. A large vehicle with thin armor and weak weapons was extremely unsuccessful, starting with problems with moving the unit to the battlefield and ending with the difficulty of firing machine guns in the side hemisphere and the impossibility of complete mine clearance. Not limiting themselves to a theoretical examination of the minesweeper, and checking its running parameters, the Soviet officers decided to test the captured vehicle in action, for which they drove it into a training minefield. The minesweeper was no longer driving on its own, it was being towed by a tank. Apparently, by this time, the engine either had not yet repaired or had already broken down. Nevertheless, in such conditions it was decided to test the minesweeper in practice. The design of the chassis and hull withstood the explosion of an anti-tank mine, but the crew suffered a concussion. At this point the test stopped. Technology was technology and no one wanted to risk their lives after the war. As a result, the conclusion was ambiguous. On one hand, the Alcat Minenräumer could fight with mines of various types and make passages in obstacles. 
but on the other hand it would almost be guaranteed to be hit by artillery and the crew would receive concussions and injuries when anti-tank mines or special ammunition exploded. It was completely unclear how such a tactic could be used. After the test, the Alcat Minenräumer was returned to storage of captured property, but unlike the bulk of German weapons, it was not melted down, but transferred to the Armored Museum in Kubinka. Late by at least 25 years, the three-wheeled Alcat became a senseless waste of money and resources for the German army and did not or could not give anything to either the Germans or the Soviet army in the form of technologies and ideas. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.